life smoking my cigarette um in the morning drinking my coffee we don't do this as much as we should um same with cannoli too i've been really um off the ball lately but we got to talk about this um we got to talk kamala harris is in trouble she's in serious serious trouble she's in a virtual deadlock if not a very has a very slim lead in every single swing state. So I want to cover those swing states really quickly and show you why her losing some of the most reliant democratic leaning swing states actually will cost her this election because it's literally her election to lose. Okay. And it's not entirely her fault. I mean, there was four years of Biden fucking up uh, a lot of states on an individual level. But I'm going to go down by each issue and why this is Kamala Harris's race to lose. The first one that I just mentioned is swing states. So let's look at a swing state that in recent times has leaned um, Democrat. That state is Michigan. Democrats, while yes, there is a lot of Republic legislation that takes place on the state level, Michigan historically has leaned blue because of the heavy Amer Arab American population. Guys, we've lost the Arab Americans because of what we've been doing to Palestinians in Gaza. So now the question begs, can you win Michigan without Arab Americans? And can you win a general election without Michigan? Historically speaking, over the course of the last 30 years, if you're a Democrat and you don't win Michigan, you don't win the election. Historically speaking, over the last 20 years, if you don't win Arab Americans, you don't win Michigan. It's pretty straightforward and it's pretty simple. Um, that being said, I'm going to smoke my cigarette, guys. That being said, Michigan's not the only swing state, but without Michigan, very likely we'll, we'll lose. However, while Michigan is an interesting state, Ohio is the state of states. No one has ever won a presidential election without winning Ohio. This, include, this, is, this applies to both parties. Okay, so why is she struggling in Ohio? Because on a personal level, that state was kind of fucked by the chemical spill in East Palestine, I know Palestine, but East Palestine, Ohio, that's the name of the town. So when, and, and it serves as a warning sign for all the other neighboring swing states, just regular people in the middle of the country that if a small town like East Palestine, Ohio can be abandoned by the federal government after a major chemical spill, I mean, let's look at it. What's to say that your town wouldn't be abandoned in the middle of a disaster. So that resonates in a very, and in a very bad way with a lot of Americans. Um, that being said though, the, the spill in East Palestine, Ohio, yes, while the Biden administration failed on relief efforts and showed up to East Palestine a year too late. We have to keep in mind though, this is why Donald Trump is infinitely worse. Donald Trump deregulated Huge, huge chunks of the EPA. He cut the budget for the EPA as well. EPA is important because it prevents shit like chemical and oil spills from happening. But again, the regular American doesn't see that. Democrats don't want to explain it, so it comes back to bite us in the ass. Again, it is impossible to win a general election without the state of Ohio. Okay? And this brings me to my next point about people's concern about the federal government coming to the rescue during a uh, time of natural disaster. In a time where events like this happen, for example, the, uh, the wildfire in Hawaii, which relief checks, a one-time relief check was the only thing sent to the residents in Lahaina in Hawaii. This is an example of us choosing Israel 
and Ukraine in the federal budget over American citizens in a time of need. And this resonates with regular people. While it wasn't Kamala directly, she worked for the administration that did this. And the latest example we have is of a hurricane, not, well, Milton is about to strike, but the Hurricane Helene, which just hit Florida, went up the entire uh, East Coast. What happened to those people? All right, granted, there is going to be a relief effort done with billions of dollars for those people. But so far, all they're entitled to is a one-time check for $750. I mean, while that's being done, we're seeing another spending package of $10 billion sent to Israel to go kill Palestinian children. Regular people see this type of shit. Like your average American is probably Islamophobic and thinks Muslims getting killed good. But he's not going to prioritize that over his own well-being in America. So, again, like we really have to look at the optics of sending money to foreign countries, countries, quote-unquote, before, uh, before we help our own. I mean, this is the thing that's insane. I mean, and, and this doesn't, Trump is no different. I mean, remember, we got a one-time check during the Trump administration for COVID. So, and it's like, you think Trump would come to the rescue of these people? No, Trump would give Israel everything they want. But Biden administration was the administration in charge while this happened. So they're going to get the brunt of the blame. We haven't seen how much worse Trump would be. When it comes to foreign policy. I mean, he might be directly responsible for spearheading the October 7th attacks because of his green lighting for the massacre of women and children during the 2018 protests in Gaza for the March for Our Lives. Something very important to remember. But I digress. Okay, these are the mundane details that people don't know behind the scenes as to why it looks like Kamala sucks. Now, this is my last point. And the media fucked this up in 2016. The media is going back to um, false equivalencies between the two candidates. The same shit that fucked Hillary Clinton. And guys, listen. Kamala's heavily flawed, but it's not even close. And as someone who fundraises for the DNC, I work at the DNC. I'll tell you, when I talk to a lot of prospective donors, they understand this. They understand this concept, okay? But it's the regular people at home that are watching mainstream media that don't understand this concept and think it's comparable. So, I mean, I want to play a clip, okay? But before I play this clip... um. I'm going to tell you on a personal level, as someone that works at the DNC, when it comes to not prospective donors, previous donors for previous Democratic elections, the Democrats have run through their resources on a individual level. On an individual level, all the Democrats have have, have left is PACs, and I'm pretty sure they went through their those. All they have is lobbyists. Pretty sure they used the majority of those within the first two weeks of Kamala being declared. The, uh, the nominee. I'm pretty sure the Democrats have expended everything they possibly can. When I go to a fundraise, when I talk to a prospective donor, right, I always say, it, and this was a week ago I was saying this shit, because this week I have a totally different tune. Last week I was telling donors, yes, it's in the bag. However, we need that insurance money in case something like James Com what James Comey did to Hillary Clinton happens. We need to advertise our way out of a non-scandal created by the mainstream media. And what do I mean by a non-scandal created by the mainstream media? I mean some shit like the fucking emails of Hillary Clinton. We need money to advertise our way out of that type of shit. And I'm going to show you an example. This is, this is a clip 
I'm gonna play. And this is what hacks mainstream media. They're not real journalists, guys. I'm gonna spill the. They're not real journalists, okay? The fact that. I'm gonna break this down and it's gonna piss off. It's good. I might be the most mad out of anyone who watches this clip. But listen to this bullshit. Is about saying that Let me when play you for invest the in small business, my plan is about saying that when you invest in small businesses, you invest in the middle class and you strengthen America's economy. Small businesses are part of the backbone of America's economy. But, but pardon me, Madam Vice President. I, the, the question was, how are you going to pay for it? Well, one of the things is I'm going to make sure that the richest among us who can afford it pay their fair share in taxes. It is not right. Up to this point, completely normal response from Kamala Harris. Like, it, it doesn't get more normal than this. Now watch this hack. Watch this hack journalist. Listen to what he says. This is hack journalist who works for a network that takes the same money as politicians do from lobbyists. Same lobbying firms, same advertising groups, same pharmaceutical, same industry, you name it, it's the same. As the politicians, donors, as it is the journalist donors. When I say journalist, I mean the media. She is coming off as more moral and more common sense. As not just a journalist, a CBS journalist. One of the ones they go, he's revered. He has a Pulitzer. One of these journalists is about to look more disingenuous than a politician. Watch. That teachers and nurses and firefighters are paying a ha higher tax rate than billionaires and the biggest corporations. But, but, and I plan on making that fair. But we're dealing with the real world here. But the real world includes... How are you gonna yeah, numb nut. The real world, people pay more in taxes. And by the re real world, I mean every other Western democracy pays more in taxes. Okay? So they can ensure shit like this. So we can ensure subsidies, not to the most rich people in the country, but the people that need starting money for their small business. I thought we, what the fuck is going on? We don't have money for the small business anymore? We are America. We are the fucking, we fucking masturbate to small businesses. This is ridiculous. But here comes CBS fake journalist hack, paid shrill. Here he comes. To Congress. You know, when you talk quietly with a lot of folks in Congress, they know exactly what I'm talking about because their constituents know exactly. Yes, they are paid to lie, the people in Congress. She's nailing it on the head. And by the way, the caption of this video is, CBS reporter just called out Kamala Harris and left her stuttering. It's not, telling someone to pay more in taxes is not, doesn't deserve a call out. It deserves a, oh, okay. That's it. That's all. Oh, okay. That makes sense. What I'm talking about. Their constituents... And by the way, I'm sure this journalist makes a pretty penny as well. He is not trying to pay more in taxes. ...are those firefighters and teachers and nurses. My plan... The fact that this journalist, so-called, had this type of pushback on a totally normal, mundane answer from Kamala Harris... Shows that, again, they're just engaging in the false equivalency shit. And it's going to bite us in the ass. I mean, Hillary Clinton literally lost an election because of this type of BS. So, um, to recap, these are the things that'll, that'll hurt Kamala Harris. I mean, she stands to lose Michigan. Historically, a Democrat does not win an election, uh, well, in recent times, does not win an election without winning Michigan. And to win Michigan, you need the Arab vote. Literally, they're funding the genocide of Muslims in Palestine. I don't think she's going to win that vote. Loses Michigan. Impossible. Ohio. Historically speaking, no one has won a presidential election. And no one has won a presidential election without winning Ohio. Natural disaster relief. The optics are horrible. We don't send enough relief. Because we're always sending money to Israel. 
Really plays bad, ties in with losing Michigan, okay? And the last, this isn't the last, but what I just played, the media engaging in the same false equivalency tactics that they did with Hillary Clinton in 2016. We never learned our lesson. They want the orange monster back. It's good for their ratings. They take the same donors as Kamala. Not even, way more. Kamala's at least capable of giving a totally normal, mundane answer. But this is my last point, guys. Um, oh, two more points. One is embracing people like Liz Cheney's endorsement. We say we're in here to save democracy because of what Donald Trump did. Attempted coup. Yes, it was an attack on democracy. But it's not like Liz Cheney's father, you know, Liz Cheney, daughter of Darth Vader, was exactly democratic himself. I mean, he literally did stop a count in Florida so he could take the presidency in 2000. So we're going to... Daughter of anti-democratic vice president who got us involved in a uh, regime change war... Yeah, really doesn't look good at the optics. Wrong endorsements. Terrible optics when it comes to natural disaster relief. These terrible optics are going to cost us Michigan. They're going to cost us Ohio. But last on the list, guys, historically speaking, Democrats, because of the way the Electoral College is framed, Democrats need to win by five points. By five. Five points Democrats need to win. We can't just win the popular vote. We need to win by five points. And we are in a deadlock in every single swing state. And on top of that, previous donors, we've expended them. We need new donors. We did record run fundraising, but it's not enough. So we're going to, uh, of course, we're going to keep an eye on this election. Are you crazy? But I want to see the last debate. We'll see if she gets any bumps from the polling in the last debate, if they do a last debate. Because if I'm Donald Trump and I'm watching this, and I saw my poll numbers immediately after the first debate with Kamala, not Biden, I'm thinking, I don't need to do a debate. I'm just going to let her dwindle. If I do a debate, it'll cost me the election. But again, he thinks he's completely competent, so who knows? Maybe he shoots himself in the foot. But she really needs another debate. Just to remind people who's normal. But anyways, we're going to keep an eye on this. Um, and I might have another one uh, coming up soon, so stay tuned.